Well, a massive hello and welcome to you back here on The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me from Singapore. Good morning uh, is when I'm recording it here in the morning. And it's great to have you here with me wherever you are around the world on whatever platform you're on, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or YouTube or any of our other platforms. It's great to have you with us. By us, I mean me. We're here today together. Anyway, let's move on. In Singapore, excited to get into our brew. I found some coffees, uh, so I'm excited to get into those today as well as our scriptures that we are going to be reading. They are in the descriptions on every platform. I'll tell you what they are right now. Psalm chapter 71, verse 19 to 24. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to chapter 7 verse 19 and 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 13 to chapter 16 verse 14. So those are our scriptures that we're going to be reading today. Make sure you check those out. Yeah, if you miss those, you can check them again in the descriptions on every platform. But today, brews back in Singapore. Yesterday, uh, Annalise and I went for a walk around to try and find some coffee. And honestly, the hot coffee that we've had here hasn't been super great. So I've been, it's also been like 30, 32 degrees, feeling like 38 with the humidity. So I haven't really been going after much hot coffee, but I have been going after cold coffee. And today I have a healthy, healthy and beauty branded. <laughs> I actually didn't read that before. It's the healthy and beauty brand, hot brew vanilla latte. Now this is the special BTS. You 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 might know of them. That I think that I think this might be a Korean coffee, potentially. I don't know. I don't know. It just looks good. Um, yeah, it's imported by Cold Storage Singapore. So this is actually from Korea, which is very exciting. We're just trying all sorts of coffees around here, but this is the vanilla latte and uh, the top ingredient. You might be asking, what's the top ingredient? Top ingredient: purified water, pasteurized milk. Hot brewed coffee extract. What's a coffee extract? I don't know. Sugar uh, is in there as well. Vanilla flavor. Blah 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 blah. But let's give this a try today, and uh, give it a wee shake. Let's give it a try. It is the. It's. We've just discovered it's Korean. I'm having Korean cold coffee in Singapore. Brought to you by BTS, the band, the Korean band. Anyway, let's give this a try. Oh, that's interesting. That is just. Pla anyway, that. This is not the color of the coffee. That's just the wrapping. Here we go. Okay, let's have a little bit more. Mm. To be honest, it's it's much like many of the other vanilla lattes that you try, uh, except this one is going to make me healthy and beautiful. So <laughs> for that, I'm going to give it some extra kudos. I'm going to give this a good six out of ten. Like it's good, it's refreshing. I'd have this on a hot day. But it's got more vanilla than it does the coffee flavor. And I do like a bit more coffee flavor in there. It's a bit light on coffee, very sugary. It's also, well, it's only got 7% sugar in it, apparently. Anyway, there you go. That's the coffee for today. It is the Healthy and Beauty Hot Brew Vanilla Latte for you today. Have it if you're ever here. Give it a try. If you're not, if you're in Korea, there you go. I've tried one of your coffees, and I didn't even know I was going to do it. That is it for the Brulo. Let's get into the Bible, the reason that we are here. Let's have a look at what the psalmist says in verse 20. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter. There's an acknowledgement here that there has been some stuff that the writer has gone through. Many troubles, and they're not just many troubles, but they're bitter troubles as well. And this can be life at times. At, at times, it can feel like God has made us see these troubles made us see these bitter troubles and so so the question I suppose then if it can feel like that is well what do we do how do we respond when we feel that way there are three things that I think we should do that we can take from the psalm we should respond with trust I find it super easy to trust God and maybe you're the same when things are really easy or things are going well but but when it flips when life gets hard or when it feels like it's troubled I feel like God is distant, my response can also become distant from trust. Look at verse 19. It says, you have done great things. Who is like God? There is a statement of trust here, right? In the process of troubles, I still trust because who is like the Lord? The second way we should respond is with hope. Verse 20 to 21, share a lens of hope. You should read that again. I'll give you the three things 
it talks about you will restore my life again you will bring me up you will increase my honor and comfort hope says i believe that you will do it either for the first time or again i trust that you will do what you said you will do even if i can't see it right now i have hope i have hope that you will do it and the last way we should respond is with worship the last part of the psalm is a statement of worship I think we should fill our homes, our cars, our work with worship, our families with worship. Even even if you're at work and you just have headphones on playing worship music, I think we should fill our lives with worship because as you fill your surroundings with worship, you're going to join in to worship God as well. I want to encourage you to watch as it changes the atmosphere of your life as you fill your life with worship. I think sometimes we look at the early church with rose-tinted glasses. It's almost like the church today has an idealization of what we believe to be the perfect picture of how church should be. And that maybe that church had no problems to it at all. And this really isn't true. This isn't the truth. Churches are perfect. I mean, this is the truth. Churches are perfect until people get involved, right? Acts 2 and Acts 6 need to go hand in hand. And then we need to couple all of that with the reality. I just knocked the phone. I'm just distracted by the phone. Let me just put that phone there uh we need to couple that with the reality of all of the letters that paul writes throughout the new testament when we see these letters and we when we see acts 2 and acts 6 going hand in hand we see that the problems in the church back then and the problems in the church today are similar things like complaining stirring up and the fear of change just to name a few if we're going to build healthy churches and healthy teams we should take note of what the apostles did to choose their leaders Even those who would wait on tables, the Bible says that they chose people who were full of the Spirit and wisdom. When we do this, our teams and our churches will be in a far better position than if we don't. This is going to require relational discipleship, though, to help people grow in their depth and to learn the wisdom of God. Relational discipleship also helps us address issues like complaining, stirring, and fear. And if we're proactive in our discipleship, then we can actually address these things before they even start. We cannot disciple simply from the pulpit. We have to be in their world and they have to be in ours. Yesterday, we started talking about Absalom and David. And today we see that Absalom has fully turned against David. In David's reaction uh, to this fact that Absalom has turned away, it shows the devastation that he felt. And, And it can give us some comfort in our own lives when it comes to processing our own pain. The Bible says that he went to the Mount of Olives and he wept as he went. He covers, he covers his head, the Bible says, and he was barefoot. Not only that, all the people were also weeping as they went up. This is deep emotional grief that we're seeing here. That, th- this is so deep that it got to the point where the whole countryside wept aloud. So what do we do here? What, what, how are we supposed to respond to this? Well, I think what we should see in this scripture is that it's okay to weep. It's okay to cry and it's okay to mourn. We also see that uh, Shemi shouts or Shemai shouts insults at David he throws rocks and he curses David in response to this David does something quite different though he doesn't bar up and throw fists in response he just leaves it in God's hands which is a wild response for me personally if someone threw rocks at me I don't know if I'd be able to stay calm but at the end of all of this emotional and physical toil David and all the people arrive at their destination and the Bible says that they arrive exhausted and fair enough too Friend, I want to encourage you today that we're all going to experience times of exhaustion. How we respond to this exhaustion is so important. David, the Bible says, seeks the Lord. He prays against the foolishness of his enemies, and then he rests and refreshes himself. Now, we don't know what exactly it is that David did to refresh himself, but through the Psalms, what we do know is that being close to God was a huge part of his refreshing and his restoration. I want to encourage you that in your disappointment, to find yourself not just, uh, sorry, find yourself refreshed not just through self-care but through sacrificial worship and proximity to his presence too verse of the day i don't know if you can hear that but i think they're doing some roadworks on the street outside they're building a whole bunch of new train stations and stuff so if you can hear that sorry about that that i can't control an army of workers outside verse of the day though verse uh chapter acts (laughs) shall i tell you the book first the book of acts chapter 6 verse 13 says They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. 
The attack of character assassination is not new in 2023 and beyond. It's something that's been around for a long time. We see it here. It's being it's being outworked right now in real time in the Book of Acts. The the death that we're going to face for our Christianity, the persecution we're going to find for our uh, or face for our Christianity in in the Western world is the destruction of our character, the assassination of our character. And if you find yourself in this position today, I want to encourage you to take heart from Stephen's story. Even though it ends in death for Stephen, God was with him and led him into heaven. I want to encourage you that even if your character is being assassinated today, God is going to be with you and he'll lead you into a far better place than where you could lead yourself on your own. And that is it for the Daily Brew, day 161 of 365 days done and dusted. Thank you so much for joining me here in Singapore. I pray God is blessing you as you read these scriptures as much as he is to me. I'm loving getting through these scriptures. Love the book of Acts as well. So much juicy, juicy things going on in there. Speaking of juicy, juicy things, although this isn't juicy, it's more milky, milky. Hot brew, vanilla latte, cold. It's very confusing, this coffee. It's hot brew, but it's cold coffee. It's very challenging for me to understand what is actually going on with this coffee. But there you go. We tried a Korean coffee, the first ever Korean coffee here on the Daily Brew. Maybe even the last. Who knows? I don't know what is happening. Hey, a massive thank you to everybody who's followed us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you for doing that and rating the podcast as well. And to you on YouTube, thank you for joining me here again today. Uh, Thank you for subscribing and clicking the bell so that you never miss a devotional upload and so that we can get these devotionals out far and wide until more and more people. Hey, if it's a start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for day 162 on The Daily Brew.